السلام عليكم ورحمة الله حياكم الله This is an introduction to the Arabic derivatives مشتقات الاسم والفعل Part of the Learn Arabic series Part 2 will focus on the derived forms of verbs مشتقات الفعل We'll start by looking at the extra letters the six letters that can be added to roots to create additional meanings to these verbs These are the, the alif hamza, hamza al-qata' or hamza al-wasl that comes at the beginning of a verb. And there's the seen and the ta, and the noon also, and the two long vowels alif and waw. So you see here I've given some examples where the, the, the new, the extra letters are highlighted. Here is the hamza al-qata', and here it's the, the alif, seen, and ta. And in the third word, it's alif and noon. And in the last, it's a simple alif, a long vowel in the middle. I posted a table on the group explaining the different forms that v verbs can appear in. Uh, I hope you don't give up on verbs. We'll try to explain them as simply as we can here. Uh, we'll take a look at several roots and their meanings before and after adding additional letters. So for example, alima here, the root alima, is to uh, have knowledge, it's to gain knowledge, so it's sort of like learning, gaining knowledge here. Um, when you double the middle letter, uh, it sim simply means that you are carrying an action now to someone else. So if alima is to, to gain knowledge, Alama is to give knowledge. And one note is that the doubling of a letter, when the, whenever there's a doubling of the letter or the appearance of a shadda, it means that this action is repeated. So you are teaching, um, repeatedly teaching or giving this knowledge. The third word, ta'allama here, uh, it has the meaning of the first, the original root, the first word here. Um, except it it's indicates uh, gradual occurrence. So, alima here, you knew, you gained knowledge, but ta'allama is you learned slowly, slowly. Uh, once again, the doubling of uh, the, the letter here indicates the repetition. The same thing with the root fahima. So, fahima is to understand, you understood something. Fahima. Now this is carrying the action for, for someone else, carrying it out for someone else. So you are trying to explain something to uh, someone else. Uh, so you're trying to make him understand. Tafahama uh, here uh, has the same meaning of the root. Uh, so it's to understand, but it's gradually understanding it, slowly, slowly. Um, as, as well as with the repetition of the letter here, it means that this action is repeated. So it, there are slight different meanings uh, between these uh, words, the, these verbs, but they still connect to the root. Let's take a look at two different forms also for the same uh, previous roots. It's alima once again becomes a'lama. Um, so a'lama uh, this is the same as in alama, uh, except w with no doubling of letters, there's no repetition to the action, but it still has the meaning of carrying out the action to someone else. This They consider it a transitive verb, uh, so it's actually here once again alima, to gain knowledge. Alama means that you are giving this knowledge, very much like alama. And uh, one other form is istalama. Now istalama, as soon as you see the alif seen ta at the beginning, it means to ask it or to seek something. So istalama means to seek knowledge or to, to, to ask knowledge. The same thing for the root fahima. Um, so remember the previous example was fahama, is carrying out the action for someone else. Uh, so you're trying to explain something to someone else. Afhama is the same thing. Afhama is the same as fahama. It means to try to explain something to someone else. And uh, the, the, the last word, which is istafhama, it means um, to ask an explanation. Uh, to ask it or to seek an explanation. 
Now, this here, these are here two different forms that verbs can appear in. You see here that this one has an additional alif in the middle, a long vowel alif. And here it's a te plus an alif. Uh, so let's look at the meanings of these uh, new verbs. Uh, the, the, the root semaha, meaning to allow or to so, in a way forgive. Uh, the, the new verb becomes samaha with the alif. Samaha means that this action here uh, was uh, done between two people. Uh, so there are two people involved in this verb. One forgiving and the, one, uh, the other one being forgiven. Uh, so uh, it's uh, two people involved. They become samaha. Um, as for tasamaha, tasamaha here it's closely related to, to samaha, but it means that there was a group of people involved. So one person forgave an, a, a group. This this other group could be uh, one person or more, two or more. Um, so it's a group related verb. Um, plus the additional te in the beginning also indicates the gradual occurrence of it. So he slowly, slowly forgave. Um, unlike Samaha, he's already forgiven this one person. Uh, as for Tasamaha, he's uh, gradually forgiving the group. The same thing with the root Ba'ada here. Ba'ada here to separate, to make, to, to make distance of something. Remember the doubling of a letter, of the appearance of a Shadda indicates uh, the repetition of the action to con constantly separate. Ba'ada here with the Alif means that the action was uh, the, done between two people, so he separated two people. Um, Taba'ada is the, also separating, but a group uh, involved. Uh, and with the ta, it indicates the, the gradual occurrence of this verb. Let's practice the previous forms by looking at them in different roots, different verbs. So, fariha here. The root fariha means to be happy. It becomes farraha. Farraha. The meaning of farraha here, remember with the doubling of a letter, the appearance of a shadda is a doubling. So it means the repetition of the verb. And the form farraha uh, becomes um, actually uh, carrying out the action to someone else. It's making someone else happy. So fariha, you become happy. As for farraha, you are making someone else happy. Uh, the root, uh, another one, which is addaba. Uh, this is here, remember, a doubling of a letter. So it means, uh, addaba means to ask someone to behave himself. So addaba, it's actually asking someone else to behave himself. It becomes ta'addaba. This returns once again to the first person. So he is behaving himself. That, that's what the ta says. Once again, it returns it to the first person. And uh, the shadda here means the repetition of the, 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 the action once again. Let's take a look at two different roots. The verb qata'a here, uh, meaning to cut, uh, to cut, to tear something apart, to separate something. It becomes here qata'a, qata'a with the alif. Uh, this is uh, this means that two things or two people are involved um, so it could uh, it means to cut something into two or it means also to cut off someone um, the root khasama with the alif it's two people involved uh, it means to argue with someone else or, or to fight with them it here is takhasama in this form, it becomes uh, more than two people involved. It's a group involved. So one person is um, arguing with another person, or two, there are one or two or more people. Uh, remember, tahas, the ta also uh, indicates uh, the gradual occurrence. Shukran wa